I'm providing a beginner's example of RTK Query. We'll build a simple React CRUD app with RTK Query, and I think you will see it is very easy to use. Hello and welcome. I'm Dave. Today I'm providing an introduction to RTK Query by building a simple to-do list with create, read, update, and delete requests. I'll provide links to example source code and all resources in the description below. Please note this tutorial is not for absolute beginners in React. It is for those that already know React and are beginners with Redux and Redux Toolkit. If you are a React beginner, you should complete the React JS for Beginners full course on my channel, or one like it, at a minimum before attempting this Redux series. I'm going to move at a slightly faster pace today since I don't expect you to be a React beginner. Being a beginner with RTK Query is totally expected, and that's what we're going to work through. Okay, let's look at the package JSON first. And you can see the dependencies I've got here. The first three are for Font Awesome, and I'm using Font Awesome to create some icons that are actually rendered as components, and you'll see that in the code. If you haven't done that before, I'll leave a link to how to do that in the description. Very easy, but you need these three dependencies. And so while we're not covering that today, that's part of it. Then of course, we've already got Redux.js slash toolkit, that dependency here as well. The one to really note today is React has upgraded to version 8. 18 now. So that does make a change from what you may be used to seeing in the index file. We won't really use any of those features today so much, but we're using the new version. So before we might have had React DOM dot render. And notice React DOM is now being imported from React DOM slash client instead of just React DOM. If you don't do that, you'll get a warning. And then we're using create root here and putting the document get element by ID root right here, and then we're just chaining the dot render on after that. So some very small changes just due to React version 18 that you see in the index.js, but not covering React 18 today, and really it won't impact anything else we're doing. Now also in the starter code here that's available for download from the link in the description is uh, a data folder. And notice I've got a db.json and it just has all of these to do's in it. And that's because we're going to use JSON server. So to install that, if you don't already have JSON server installed, now I'm already running the React app here, by the way. So we're going to just open a second terminal window. Now to install JSON server, if you don't have it, we're going to install it globally, type JSON server, and then you would want, well, actually to install it, you type npm i json server, and then dash g, and that's the global install. Now I've already got it installed, so I'm not going to press enter right now, but that's how you would install it if you need it. After that, to go ahead and start the server, you type json dash server, and then you'll have dash dash watch, and then you need to specify where your data is. Well, it's in our data folder, and then it's db, dot json and then we're going to specify a port which is port 3500 and then press enter it will identify our to do's there and it starts watching that data so now it will support create read update and delete functions okay now that i've got that running and i like i said i have the app running over here in the other terminal window I'm just going to close the terminal window for now and close this db.json. And let's take a quick look at the app.js. And you can see here we're importing a to-do list component that is in a features directory and then a to-dos directory. And then there's our to-do list component. And this is how you typically organize features when you're using Redux. So that's the reason for that file structure if you're not familiar with Redux. Okay, and then we're just returning that to-do list component here in the app component. So really nothing else going on. So let's break this out and look at that to-do list component. Now what we don't have here is any integration with RTK query yet. But other than that, you may have created a to-do list before. If not, we'll have the basic code together for one today. But we're still going to add some imports here for RTK query. We're going to handle a submit and handle adding a new to-do. And then as we scroll on down here, you can see the form we have, and that's for adding that new to-do. And of course, we're using state here. So we have new to-do and set new to-do. 
Other than that, we're going to create some content based on conditionals, conditional content, and then we'll render that content here in the JSX. So that's all the starter code. Now let's get started by integrating RTK Query into our project. We'll start by adding an API directory inside of the features directory. So I'll click the new folder up there and we'll name this API, which is also the default. If we were to name this something else, we would have to specify that for RTK Query. So I'll leave it as the default today, which also makes sense. It's the representing the API in our code. Now let's add a file to this API directory. It'll be called API slice with camel case, a capital S, and then .js. Okay, inside the API slice, this is where we will create our methods to interact with the API. It essentially replaces something like Axios and pulls that code out of our component logic and over here in a separate API slice, which is kind of how we name things in Redux, if you're familiar with Redux, and if you've gone through my Redux toolkit series. Okay, I'm going to paste in the imports, and you can see we've got create API and fetch base query being imported from Redux.js toolkit query React. And so yes, this is specific to React. You can use Redux toolkit and RTK query without using React, but this, of course, this imports some tools specifically for React. And now I'm going to paste in the slice and you can see it's export, so we can export the slice, export const API slice, and then we use create API. Inside of this, it's an object, as you can see with the curly braces. The first thing we do is define the reducer path. Again, this is the default, so if we didn't put this here, it would still be okay because it would just default to that, but I'm going ahead and including it, and again, you would need to rename that if that is not what you were calling it. Now then we have a base query, and this uses the fetch base query that we imported. And then there's a base URL. This should look very familiar to you if you're familiar with Axios, because you can define a base URL with Axios as well. Today we're using JSON server with our local dev environment, so it is just our local host, and then port 3500 as we specified for JSON server. From there, we're defining endpoints for the API to interact with. And if you did work through my Redux Toolkit series, then you are familiar with the builder cases that we had in Redux Toolkit. And this is very similar. So we once again pass in a builder and then we're defining methods to interact with the API. So we're going to get all of the to-dos, so I'm just naming this get to-dos, and we have builder.query, and then inside of that, we have our query method, and it once again is just an anonymous function that passes the slash to-dos that would be attached to the base URL. It's going to request then all of the to-dos with an HTTP get method. And then one very cool feature about RTK Query is it creates custom hooks based on the methods that we provide. So we could name this something else like get pizzas or something like that, and it would create these custom hooks based on that name. So this says use get to do's query, but if we named this get pizzas, it would be use get pizzas query. So it's going to start with use and end with query, and it's going to use whatever name we use for the method in between. So down here, we've just got export const and we're destructuring, getting the use get to do's query from API slice. And now before we put this custom hook to use inside of our to-do list component, I'll save this file, we need to go back to the index.js. Some might do this in the app.js, but it's just like the context provider if you were using the context API with React, we need to provide our slice to the app. So there's a couple of imports we need to use here, and we're importing the API provider, once again from Redux.js, Toolkit, Query, and React, and then we're importing that API slice that we created and exported. So it's from Features, API, and then we're getting the API slice. So once we have those, 
we need to wrap our app with that provider. And I'll do that just by highlighting the app and then pasting this over so you can see, but we're absolutely wrapping this app component in the API provider. And then we're passing in the API to the API or with the API provider. And it is of course the API slice that we created. And now that our app can access this, we can put that hook to use that we created. So let's go to the to-do list component. At the very top where I noted add imports with a comma or a comment, I'm going to just paste in this import and it is the use get to do's query that we created right here. So then we need to define that or use it inside of the component. And we'll do that by just pasting this in and let's look at everything we get from this hook, which is quite a bit. We're getting data and we're destructuring all of this and I'm renaming the data to do's here. And then we have is loading, is success, is error, and finally, of course, if there is an error, we find out what that error is. So this looks a lot like a custom use Axios hook or some other logic you may have seen used in a component before. And once again, this custom hook is being created for us. So that's pretty awesome with RTK query. Now let's go ahead and use this to conditionally render some content. I'm going to scroll down and where we find our content here, and I left a comment that said define conditional content. I'll just paste this in quickly and we'll break it down. We've got if is loading, so if that's true, we're just going to render this loading paragraph. And if you have a spinner component, that's a great place to put it as well. Else if is success, meaning we've received that data, for now we're just going to use JSON stringify and have it render to the page. So it won't look pretty, but we'll know we've got it. And then the final else if here is, is error. And then if that is true, of course, we have an error and we're going to display what that error is. And you can see in the JSX, we're just going to render that content. So let's save all of this. And now let's pull this over to the left, Visual Studio Code that is, and see what this looks like. Okay, we've got an error. It looks like an import is wrong where we've got dot dot slash API slice. So let's see what's going on. I'll pull this back over so I can see the full thing and we'll need to scroll up to the top. And yeah, that's probably not where that is. So let's find our API slice. We needed to go up out of the to-dos, two dots, not two slashes. And then we need to go into the API folder, then find the API slice. And we were missing that API folder there in the import. Okay, we should be good. I'll drag this back to the left. And yep, we're getting all of that JSON stringify data here on the page, so we are receiving all of the data. Okay, let's pull Visual Studio Code back over so we can view it in a full screen. And now that we know we're receiving the data, let's go back to that API slice and add our other methods. Okay, we'll put a comma right after this get to do's method, and we can paste in our next method here. And that would be an add to do. And notice something different about it. Instead of a builder.query, it is a builder dot mutation and the rest of our methods will be mutations and that means we're actually changing the data we're not just requesting or querying the data but then we'll still have the keyword query right here and notice a to do is being passed in because it needs a new to do and then we're once again specifying a url but this time we're saying it is the url instead of just having a default query like we did above we're also saying what method we're using because it could be different. It could be put or patch or delete or like we have here is post. And then for the body of this request, we're just passing in that new to do. Okay, after the add to do, let's go ahead and paste in the update to do and look how it is very similar to the add to do. It's also a builder mutation. It also receives a to do, but notice the URL is different. Here we're using a template literal so we can specify the specific to do with its ID that we're going to update. And we're using patch and not put. You could use either one. Put is typically used as the method when you're replacing the full record and patch is typically when you're just updating part of the record. So I'm using patch right here. We are passing in the to do though. And then after that, let's go ahead and put in the delete 
And to do that, I'm going to scroll a little bit so we can see it all. And here is our delete to do. Once again, it's a mutation. Now we only need the ID, whereas the update needed not only the to do ID, but also the to do itself. Here we just need the ID. So we're destructuring that from the to do as it's passed in or whatever object we send with the ID. And then we're passing in that same URL essentially, but now we don't have to have todo.id, it just has the ID here in the template literal. The method is delete, and the body only contains the ID because that's all that is needed to delete the todo. And now that we've added these new methods, we can just scroll down here to our export const and we just need to add those other hooks that are created. And notice once again, they're not queries, they are all mutations. So they start with use and end with mutations. So we created an add to do method and so it's use add to do mutation. The same for use update to do mutation and use delete to do mutation. Okay, let's save these and head back to the to do list to use all of these new hooks. So instead of just the use to do's query being imported, we're going to import in the other three hooks that were created as well. And then under where we use the use get to do's query hook, we'll paste these in and you can see we're just getting the functions from these hooks. We don't really need to wait on the is loading, is success, is error, and all of those things that we get from the query when we're reading the data. This is something we're actually doing to the data. So add to do, update to do, and delete to do. And now the first function we'll put to work is that add to do. So right here inside of the handle submit, I'll paste this in and let's take a look. We've got the add to do and all it really expects to receive is a to do. So I'm creating a to do object here. We're passing in the new to do. We're setting the completed to false and I'm just setting them all to user ID one. If you wanted to create a drop menu and provide different user IDs, you could. The data has user IDs in it. So that's really up to you and how you wanna do it. Right now, the way this is set up, every new to do that is added would be attributed to user one. And now let's add some more detail to our conditional content. So where we have the JSON stringify, let's replace that and map over all of the to-dos to create something that's a little bit more like we want. I'll hide the file tree so we can see it all. But what we're doing is mapping over all of the to-dos instead of the JSON stringify here. And then we're returning an article and each article is going to have a key that matches the todo.id because there's lots of articles that will be rendered on the page, one for each todo. And then we've got a div here with a class name of todo and that holds the input and then that is the checkbox. And then it also holds the label, which is the description. And that label has the HTML4, which we're also assigning to the ID of the input, so they're linked. And using a label here instead of a span or a paragraph really helps with accessibility as well because it's linked to that checkbox. Other than that, when we change, we're calling the update to do. And what we do there is spread in the existing to do, then we overwrite the completed state because this change is for the checkbox. And so that just sets the completed state to false if it was true or true if it was false. And then of course we have a button here and the button has the trash can icon and that calls the delete to do. And we're just passing in an object with that ID. So we've got ID and then to do dot ID right here. Okay, with these changes saved, let's pull our code back over and take a look at our app. Well, this looks much better. So let's see what happens if we go ahead and click on things. It's not changing, is it? It's not updating. Let's see if it deletes doesn't seem to be deleting. I wonder what's going on. Maybe we can add a new to-do and we'll say learn stuff. And let's see if it's added. It will be all the way at the bottom. It's not at the bottom either. So let's talk about what's going on. I actually know what's going on, but we needed to create this situation to understand it. So back in the API slice, if we look at these, what is happening is the results get cached and we're not invalidating the previous cache. And so it's not updating to show the new changes, whether that's a delete, an update, or even a new 
uh, to-do list, or an, not a new to-do list, a new to-do item added to the to-do list. It's not showing any of that because we're still seeing the cached version of the data. What we need to do is assign a tag to the cache and then let it know which mutations invalidate the cache. And so then it will automatically refetch that data for us. So the first thing we're going to do after the base query here is put in tag types and we're going to name this to do's. And then for our get to do's method that we have here, we need to put in a provides tags and say it's providing this tag of to do's. So then we'll need to invalidate the to do's cache when we use these builder mutations below, whether we're creating a new to do, updating, or deleting. And I'll scroll just a little bit, but we can add those right here by putting a comma after the query inside the mutation and then saying invalidates tags to do's. And so let's do that for each one of these so we know the change has been made. Actually, let's just do it for the update and the create and not the delete, and we'll be able to see the difference once again. So now let's drag this back over to the left and look at our to-do list. So for the new one, we could now say learn stuff. Press enter should work. There we go. Let's see if we have our learn stuff at the bottom. Yep, now we've got learn stuff twice because I typed that earlier with two exclamation marks. Now we've just got one. So let's try the delete. We're not seeing anything from the delete, are we? Because it's not updating. So it actually did create this earlier and it is actually deleting it now, but our list is not re-rendering. Likewise, we should go ahead and see a re-render of the list if I update an item. Yep, and now that learn stuff disappeared because it really isn't in the current state of the to-dos that we have at the API. However, trying to delete something did not cause the list to re-render, whereas updating, it did. So let's go ahead and add that mutation back over here as well. Let's find that. We've got the invalidate tags, and that's what we want to add is to that delete mutation. So we put the comma there and put in invalidates tags and save. Now we've re-rendered everything. And now if I were to say delete this second one here, our list re-renders. And if I were to check, then it re-renders and shows that new state as well. Likewise, if I were to say, hey, for a new item and press enter, we should now see it. And this also highlights our last problem. Any new to-do item we're adding is added at the very bottom of the list. I'd rather see this in reverse order and see my new item at the top of the list. But we can also fix this because much like Axios, RTK query provides a transform response. So there I can put in my sort function and I'm going to drag Visual Studio Code back over to see everything for now so you can see this clearly. We've got a transform response right after our query and here I'm just passing in the response and then I'm calling a basic sort function here for numbers in JavaScript because we're using the ID numbers. And to sort it in ascending order, it would be A minus B, but to sort in descending, it's B minus A. So I'll just save this. And now we should be transforming that response that we get from the API, and it should be sorting it in reverse order. And we've kept the logic once again out of the component and put it over here with the API logic for RTK query. I'll pull this to the left and we'll look, and now my hey is at the top of the list. I can delete that, delete my learn stuff, and even the new to do, and then add another new to do, and it's right at the top. So overall, you've got a quick introduction to RTK query here, and we've created read, update, create, and delete functions or methods, if you will, inside of our API slice, provided that to our complete application, and then of course implemented those in our to-do list component. We have a nice little to-do list here, and we've kept all of this API logic basically out of the components and in our separate API slice. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection, and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.